Google LSA is one of the greatest ways to generate local leads to your business. It puts you at the very top of the Google search for the keywords that you want. And best of all, you only pay when you get a lead. You don't pay when you get a click. You don't pay when you make an impression. You pay for leads. This makes it extremely attractive to service-based businesses, and new businesses are flocking to it every day. However, if you've been running Google LSA for a while and you notice that you're just not quite getting the impressions that you used to, that's what this video is for. I'm going to talk about how to optimize, manage, and grow your Google LSA account, as well as talk about some of the potential cons that you may face while running Google LSA to generate leads. This video assumes that you already have Google LSA set up for your business. In the future, we'll create a guide on how to set it up properly. But for the most part, it's a pretty easy thing to set up. You can find a lot of tutorials on YouTube. I'm mainly going to be talking about how to optimize it and manage it in 2024 because there were changes that were just made to Google LSA within the last 30 days that you should know about. If you're new here, my name is David Jackson. I own a local SEO and digital marketing firm here in Overland Park. I help small businesses generate leads and customers to be able to grow their operations and scale while they focus on what they do best. If you get value out of the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel for more digital marketing videos just like this. I'm going to be sharing everything that we do at our agency to help clients achieve really, really powerful results. Okay, so let's get right into it. The first thing I'd like to talk about is how you can measure your local service ad performance. If you go into the report section, which you can access by clicking on reports here, you'll see how well your LSA ad is doing. We can see the impressions, which is just how many times your ad was shown to people that were searching. And then we can see the absolute top impression rate. That just means how many times did your ad show up number one out of all of your competitors versus the number of times that it actually showed. We're gonna be talking in this video about how to increase this number and increase this number here. There are a number of ranking factors that impact how well your LSA ad does. So I'm gonna walk through each ranking factor step by step, and I'm gonna give my recommendation on what I would do if I was doing this for myself or for a client. So the very first thing we want to look at is we actually want to check out your business verification. The reason we want to look at business verification is because when we first set up the Google LSA account, we upload a proof of insurance document. It is certainly possible that that document can expire and lead the proof of insurance part here to actually give you a red X. And when you have that red X, your ad will either no longer be shown or be shown at a much, much, much lower impression rate. Optimizing your LSA due to bad performance could be as simple as just making sure you have a new proof of insurance document uploaded and verified by Google. Sounds simple enough, but we've actually seen it happen before. The second thing I want to cover is actually in the profile and budget section. In this area, you want to make sure that your bidding is actually set up right. Sometimes your bid is just too low. Sometimes it's just really, really low. So what you want to do is increase your budget. The higher this is, the more Google will work to try and actually get you the impressions to spend that budget. Now, that doesn't mean you're actually going to be spending this much money. You can set it to something as high as $5,000 per week, but it's not likely that you're going to be spending $5,000 per week. However, Google will give you a lot more impressions to try and reach that amount, but you're not going to spend that amount. Now, one thing you should do, you should monitor this. If you're setting your budget really, really high, just monitor this and make sure that you're getting good leads and that it's not going outrageous with your money. And you may have to shut your ad off if that's the case. However, I recommend setting your budget up to just be really, really high so that you can maximize the amount of impressions that you're going to receive. Additionally, your bidding strategy should be set to automated billing to maximize leads, just let Google handle this and they will try and bring you all of the leads that you can handle based on the budget that you set. When you do manual bidding, Google is still going to try to adhere to it, but your ad may not be shown as often, especially if most of your competitors are using automated bidding with a very high budget set. So I would just leave this turned on. The next thing we want to look at are your job types. You want to make sure that every single thing that your company actually does is checked here. Go through, search for your industry if it's not added, 
And then make sure that you're checking on all of the things that you were, are willing to do. Because the more different job types you have, the more likely you are to show up in an LSA search. So let's talk about the business bio and info. This is something that you want to go through and actually fill out. This can be 24-7 emergency service, six years in business, free consultation, just whatever it may be. Go ahead and check out all of these that you can. So now let's talk about photos. You want to add as many high quality photos that you can, just like your Google business profile. You want to add pictures of your service, pictures of your people, pictures of just anything you can, you know, your building, your equipment. Just go ahead and add them here. You can get them from Facebook, get them from your website, or just upload them from your phone. Next, you do want to turn on all of the different features that you can when it comes to how a lead can reach you. Now, I think this next thing is more of a preference, but it does impact your overall impression rate. If you turn on message leads to receive leads via text and email, it is going to impact your overall impression score. This is something that Google themselves states. Opt into new features. They do like it when you opt into those new features that they've rolled out. And so if you do that, then you're going to receive more impressions on your ad overall. Next, let's talk about service areas. When you're choosing a service area, we've found that it's best to use zip code targeting. For whatever reason, whenever we do zip code targeting, all of those LSA accounts are doing pretty well. But when we use city targeting, it's kind of a mixed bag. I don't really have much more of a study or data other than that. Uh, but what I normally do is I would target by zip codes as opposed to targeted by city. Just go through and enter all of the relevant zip codes that he'd like to show up for and then save the changes. Of course, if you're not getting a lot of impressions, you could just expand your area in general. This particular person would like to target the Johnson County area in Kansas. But if we wanted him to get additional impressions, of course, we would target the entire Kansas City metro area. Next up are your business hours. Just make sure these are set to when you're actually open and able to take phone calls. You don't want to set this to a time where you can't take a call or you can't respond to a message. And that's because of the ranking factor that I'm going to get into. And that ranking factor is one of the most important when it comes to increasing your ad impression rate. That's responsiveness. Responsiveness is extremely important to the performance of your Google local service ad. A lot of companies will set it up and then they just completely forget about it. That's why they see, wow, this thing is rocking. It's getting me a bunch of leads. It's doing well. And suddenly it just drops off and it stops working. Google wants to see you using the platform. And it's even more important to do so now because of the recent change that was made to disputes for your leads. So your leads are going to come in and they're going to be either new or active whenever you first receive them. What you should do for every lead is you should click into it, add the customer's name, add the customer's email, and then add any notes that you get for that customer. Additionally, you need to come in and rate the lead and actually tell Google if it was good or bad. Now, it used to be the case that this was the dispute option. You used to be able to come in here and dispute the lead and Google would determine if it was something that you should get credited for or not. Well, now they have an AI actually grading all of the leads automatically, so you no longer have the ability to manually dispute. This is why it's so important to come in and rate the lead and fill this information out. The other thing that's important is if you actually booked the lead, you need to mark it as booked. If you didn't book the lead, you can go ahead and archive it. It's important to mark leads as booked because when you actually click this button, it's going to ask you if the appointment is coming up or if you already completed it. And then you have the option to ask them for a review and you can add details about how the job went. You need to go through and actually use the system so that you can get the best performance out of it. Because what you're doing when you use these tools is you're giving Google more information and more data on how to properly serve you the leads that you want so that you can grow and continue using the platform. If we go down to the review section, what we're going to see is all of the reviews you currently have on your Google business profile. And then we have the option to ask for reviews. This gets populated based on jobs that Google thinks are completed or some that you've actually marked as completed. So you can go in here and ask each customer for a review to increase your overall score on your Google business profile. 
because the last ranking factor I'm going to talk about is your Google business profile does impact how well your ad shows. Not only does your Google business profile help your Google LSA account, but it can actually help reduce the amount that you pay per lead. So if your Google business profile is set up correctly and you, you're constantly getting reviews, then it's just going to make your ad so much more appealing and it's going to make your ad show up a lot more. Just think about it. If a customer was searching for your business and the LSA profile pops up, it's going to be shown next to two other LSA profiles as well. If your reviews look good, your photos look good, and all of the other information that they see kind of matches the expectation that they're building for their landscaping project, you're going to get the lead. So one of the best ways to grow your LSA account is that as you get leads, just make sure you're going into the lead, you're filling out all of the information, you're rating the lead, you're marking it as booked, and then you're going back and following through and asking them for a review. If you continue to do this as well as make sure that you're all set up on the profile and budget area and make sure that's all set up correctly and then make sure your verification is in order, you're going to show up more likely than your competitors will and you're going to see a big increase in the performance of your Google LSA account. Now, I know that managing this could be pretty difficult, but they do have a Google LSA mobile app that makes it a little easier to manage the leads that come from Google LSA. You can also make a lot of changes to your profile. You can mark leads as booked. And so this just makes it a little easier to do it instead of having to be at your computer all the time. Lastly, let's just talk about something that's a bit of a downside to Google LSA, and that's just its growth. And I'm not talking about the growth of, of your individual LSA account. I'm talking about Google LSA in general. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Google LSA is constantly bringing on new companies, new advertisers, and as it grows, they're going to all be competing in the exact same space you're competing in in a matter of time. The barrier to entry for Google LSA is much, much lower versus Google Ads, and so it makes it very appealing that people would want to sign up. So in a year or five years or whenever, and there are so many different landscapers in your area competing, including all of the new guys, how does Google know who to show up first, second, and third if everyone has everything optimized to the best of their ability? This, of course, leads me to believe that Google LSA, as great as it is, I don't think your company should rely so much on Google LSA. But if you're using that as your main lead generation tactic, then it's not going to pan out very well into the future because Google LSA just fluctuates. They have to be able to attract new advertisers, so they have to distribute those leads. But again, when you have so many advertisers coming in, it just creates kind of a problem. So while I think it's a really, really great tool and a really great thing, you really want to use it to get you to the next step, but you should be investing in other methods of marketing to generate additional leads. This could be Google Ads. This can be improving your website. This could be email and SMS marketing. So you don't want all of your eggs in the LSA basket. As great as it is, it's just not going to be sustainable to totally rely on this into the future because of the things that I just mentioned. It's a really great platform. Definitely, definitely, definitely sign up and use it. You can find a lot of different tutorials online on how to set up Google LSA so that you can start generating leads. And I hope that you found value in this video on how to properly manage it and grow your impression rate so that you can get more and more out of it as time goes by. Anyway, I, that's all I have for the Google LSA video. If you found value in it, please like the video down below and subscribe to the channel. I will be producing more digital marketing content and share with you all of the different tactics and strategies that we do here at our agency in Overland Park. If you need assistance with your Google LSA or any of your online marketing efforts, please visit our website. I'd love to talk to you. Anyway, take care until next time. Bye-bye.